This video is about the weekly Torah portion of Exodus, which begins the book of Exodus, uh, from the perspective of a non-Jew. Just because I think there are a lot of connections to be made here between um, Moses and Noah and the Ark and the Seven Laws, uh, or the Noahide Code. So we'll pick it up at the end of Exodus 1 and the beginning of Exodus 2. Then Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every boy that is born you shall throw into the Nile, but let every girl live. A certain man of the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw how beautiful he was, she hid him for three months. Here's a source that goes into the meaning of this verse, and they say it refers to the fact that Moses was born circumcised. And here they refer to our verse here. You'll notice also that Noah was uh, su supposedly born circumcised as well. And there are many sources on this fact that Noah was born circumcised. So they have this in common already. When she could hide him no longer, she got a wicker basket for him and caulked it with bitumen and pitch, which reminds me of the ark, which was uh, caulked with pitch. She put him in the she put the child into it and placed it among the reeds by the bank of the Nile. In fact, if you look at this word here for the wicker basket, it's the same word that's used to describe the ark. We'll go to Genesis 6.14, where God says to Noah, Make yourself an ark of gopher wood, make it with compartments, and cover it inside and out with pitch. And here's the word right here. And you can see, here you find it in Genesis 6.14, if you want to do it, and Exodus 2.3. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe in the Nile while her maidens walked along the, the Nile. She spied the basket among the reeds and sent her slave girl to go fetch it. So again, the word here for the basket is hateva, which is the same word used for the ark. And why was Pharaoh's daughter down at the Nile to bathe? There's a source that goes into this. Um... The daughter of Pharaoh came down to the river to wash herself of the idols of her father's house. And they say, like, why was she called Yehudia? Because she repudiated idol worship, as it is written. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself in the river, Exodus 2.5, which is our verse. And it says, she went down to wash and purify herself from the idols of her father's house. So she turned away from idolatry and took on monotheism and seven laws, which was the law, the covenant that was in the land at, uh, at the time. And how do we know that her name is Bitya, the daughter of Pharaoh? You can find this in 1 Chronicles 4.18. And actually, if you look at this list of names, they say that all of these names here refer to Moses as, the, as sons of Bitya, the daughter of Pharaoh, since she adopted him and, in fact, named him. So all of these names refer to Moses. And in fact, it's kind of interesting that this name he shares with uh, Jethro, who will come up later. Heber is the name that both Jethro and Moses share. Jethro is Moses' father-in-law. And more proof that the seven laws were in place at the time. They were guided by pillars of cloud and fire and led by Moses and Aaron, the venerated, inspired chiefs, then about 80 years of age. Up to this time, they only had, they had only a few laws which they had inherited from Adam, the first six, and then and Noah the extra one to make seven. These laws were not abrogated or done away with by Moses, but rather increased by him. So you'll notice that the seven are the foundation of every covenant uh, in the Torah. 
When she opened it, she saw that it was a child, a boy, crying. She took pity on it and said, this must be a Hebrew child. And it's interesting to me that uh, the root of Hebrew is Aver. And Aver comes from Shem, son of Noah. Sons were born to Shem, the ancestor of all the descendants of Aver, and older brother of Japheth, or Japheth Hagadol here. So this is a son of Noah, and this is the one where Aver comes from, the root of Hebrew. And it's because they... Uh, one of the, and we know actually the she, the tents, the famous tents of Shem and Aber, or the academies of Shem and Aber, they were teaching seven laws. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, "Shall I go and get you a Hebrew nurse to suckle the child for you?" And Pharaoh's daughter answered, "Yes." So the girl went and called the child's mother. And it's interesting to hear there's another connection to Noah's Ark. Uh, then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get a Hebrew nurse to suckle the child for you? If you remember from uh, the instructions to build the Ark, it said you should make it with compartments. The word for compartments is right here. Kenim. Now to look at this and remember it, because you'll notice that it's in this verse backwards. So <laughs> another little hint uh, of the ark. Um, sometime after that, when Moses had grown up, he went out to his kinsfolk and witnessed their labors. He saw an Egyptian man beating a Hebrew. And he turned this way and that, seeing no one about. He struck down the Hebrew and hid him in the sand, or the Egyptian, and hid him in the sa in the sand. It's very interesting that, uh, and the rabbis have pointed this out that this word, the Egyptian, has the same value as the name Moshe. So here's Moshe. It has the value three forty five. You can find it seven hundred and twenty nine times in the entire. Uh, Hebrew Bible. Well, actually, you can find this combination of Hebrew letters that make up the name Moshe 729 times, because not every time does this word or this form or this combination uh, refer to Moses. Um, but you can again, you can find it that many times, and it has the value 345, which is the same as the Egyptian, 345. Now, the priest of Midian had seven daughters. Aha, so this is where Jethro comes into play. Uh, when Pharaoh had learned of the matter, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh. He arrived in the land of Midian and sat down beside a well. So remember that, he sat down beside a well. Now, the priest of Midian had seven daughters. They came down to draw water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. But, uh, and by the way, the, the priest of Midian is Jethro, who would later go on to be Moses' father-in-law. So uh, Zipra is one of these seven daughters. But shepherds came off and drove them off, and Moses rose to their defense and watered the flock. When they returned to their father, Ruel, which is another name for Jethro, or it could refer to Jethro's father, uh, he says, how, how have you come back so soon today? And they tell him the story. Uh, and he says to his daughters, where is he then? Why did you leave him? Uh, ask him to come break bread, which is a sign of some hospitality. Uh, Moses consented to stay with the man, and he gave Moses his daughter, Zipra, in as a wife. So it's interesting here that... Um, Ruel says he ref he refers to Moses as the man, and then uh, it, the Torah says Moses consented to stay with the man, and um, it just reminds made me just interested. And when's the first time this 
word shows up in the Torah, the man, uh, the first time is in reference to Abraham in Genesis 20, verse 7. Um, Therefore, restore the man's wife since he is a prophet. And this is referring to Sarah. He will intercede for you to save your life. If you fail to restore her, know that you shall die, you and all that are yours. And here it is, the man. Restore the man's wife. Hashem, God referring to Abraham as the man. The second time it shows up is in reference to Eleazar, who is the servant and elder of Abraham's house. And it says here in Genesis 24, 26, the man bowed low in homage to the Lord. So this is a, when someone's called the man, it's a, that's a huge compliment. <laughs> Even to this day, I suppose. What's very interesting to me is, uh, this is Eliezer speaking, and he said, Blessed be the Lord, so Baruch Hashem, actually, uh, the God of my master Abraham. So what's interesting to me is, if you take this phrase that he says, so Baruch Hashem, God of my master Abraham, or blessed is the Lord, God of my master Abraham, and then check out the uh, number value or the gematria of this phrase. It comes out to 613, which is very significant in the Torah, of course. Maybe the most significant number. This is the number of mitzvot in the, in the entire Torah. Or the number of divine obligations or divine laws, if you will. Moses consent, consented to stay with the man, and he gave Moses his daughter, Zifra as a wife. So we have here Moses um, marrying a Canaanite woman, because we know that not only was Jethro the Kohen of Midian, but he was a Canaanite, or a Kenite, you'll see it, it's often translated as. Uh, those come from Cain. So he was a Canaanite, and we have Moses here, marrying a Canaanite woman. And there's a, actually a tradition of this in the Torah, it seems. There's a pattern of this. Uh, one thing, it actually seems to have started with uh, Noah and Naama, his wife, who comes from the line of Cain in Genesis 4. And it says here, and the sister of Tubal-Cain was Na Naama. And this is the one that Noah takes as a wife. As we see here, Noah went and took unto himself a wife, daughter of Enoch, and she was at that time 580 years old. And uh, just some other kind of connections between Noah and Moses. It says here, everyone whose name is repeated in immediate succession experiences life in both worlds. So this world and the world to come. Noah, Noah in Genesis 6-9, and Moses, Moses. Exodus 3, 4. Some others, quickly. They corresponded to seven righteous ones from Adam to Moses who built seven altars and had, had been accepted. And among those are Noah and Moses. And then there's this numerical connection as well. The numerical, uh, well, we know that Moses lived a total of 120 years. Again, this is well known. And that goes back to, again, Genesis 6 and Noah. This is uh, around the time of, this is actually right before the flood. Uh, my breath, the Lord said, My breath shall not abide in man forever, since he too is flesh. Let the days allowed him be 120 years. So Moses lived the full 120-year lifespan of man. And this is the extra 120 years that it took to build the ark. And God did this so that the people would have 120 years to repent. And if they had done so, he would not have uh, brought the flood. But they chose not to. Interestingly, 120 is the value of 
B'nai Noah, sons of Noah, or children of Noah, which now, these days, refers to people uh, who call themselves Noahides. <laughs> Thank you.